hello everybody or guten Abend. Um, my name is Barbara Vicerini. I'm based in Berlin in Germany. And today I'm going to talk with you a little bit about my project. But before I wanted to explain a little bit who I am and what do I work with. Um, so currently I work in different projects and my focus is always the design part, but I'm very interested about information visualization, data visualization. And on the other side, I'm also very interested about education, especially in the area of language learning. And when all these three areas combine, that's when I get the most excited to work with. Um, today, we're going to talk about a project that lays exactly on the intersection of these three areas, which is um, my book that was published last year. This is Kleine Buch ist für dich. And you might ask yourself, what does this book has to do with data and design? Um, the This little book is for this was a project developed with the University of Applied Science Potsdam and the research group from the university, which is the Urban Complexity Lab. And it's a book with over 200 pages where we explain German grammar to non-native speakers through a new visual system that aims to make the grammar structures visible um, for people, especially adults that are not German, um, or at least not native in the German language, and they need to achieve an advanced level. Um, to talk more about the book, we need to go from the beginning. So how did this project start? Um, it started back in 2015 when I moved to Germany because I wanted to study. I had already done a bachelor in design um, and I wanted to keep studying and do a master's here in Germany. But for that, I had to learn German first. And I had very little time to learn. I had eight months to achieve an advanced level. So I basically ate all the learning materials I found. I tried books, I tried apps, I tried YouTube videos. And even though I was consuming all this learning material as a learner of German, the designer inside of me, of course, was also looking at how the language was presented to learners, um, what techniques were used to help learners understand the language behind it. So when I finally learned the language, passed the test and got to the university, I wanted to keep um, looking at these materials, but now from a designer perspective. Um, we all know German is very uh, complex. I had this meme there, but there are like a lot of memes about how German is a, a very complex language. And there are many reasons why it's complex, but today I want to focus on the declension because uh, as soon as you start learning German, you cannot go away without learning the Klanschen. And um, the reason why German has so many articles, for example, is because um, there is a different article for each grammatical gender. So depending on the word, if it's masculine, neutral or feminine, and depending on what case. And then the intersection of these both categories would generate a different art article and a different ending. So when you're learning German, um, you always need to keep in mind um, a lot of things, but spe specifically these two like uh, categories. Um, and different materials use different techniques to help learners. The most common one and basic visual technique to help learners is the highlighting. Um, and highlighting, it's, well, very basic. I don't need to go much into detail. The specific thing about highlighting in languages is that it often happens in two levels. So one level is to show what part of the sentence learners have to focus. And the second level is within that part of the sentence, what specific aspects you have to be careful with. Um, and although it is very effective to guide attention, it doesn't provide a lot of uh, visual support for learners. So there are other materials that do that in a stronger way. A very common way to do is use color to inform the gender. 
So here in this example, we have green to show that the next words coming are neutral. And when there is a blue circle, then it shows the next words are uh, masculine. And this is very helpful when you're not native because there are no rules for what is masculine, what is neutral, what is uh, feminine. Another, the same technique is used for another category, which I talked in the beginning, the cases, to show what is what part of the sentence is nominative and what part of it is accusative. The problem of those techniques, even though they are very helpful, they cannot be combined because they basically rely only on color um, to explain these two things. So either you choose to visualize the gender or you see the case, and often you cannot see the intersections. Another problem is that you have to also use highlighting because we still need to show learners what part of the sentence they need to focus their attention on. And again, since highlighting very often relies on color, this can all get very messy very quick. And here, this is just one example. There are like hundreds of different ways this is used. But I wanted to know, okay, how could we use design to create something different and something new? Um, my first step was to really dive into the problem and understand what is happening, what are those materials, who make them, how they're made. So I contacted two publishers that, were, that developed those didactic books, and I asked to talk with the editor, and the, um, I talked to one author and two design agencies to understand how they work together and how they come up with solutions, like how who chooses what colors to use or what techniques to use. Um, next to that, I also looked into other ways languages are taught worldwide. Um, and that's when I came across uh, the Montessori grammar symbols. And then if you're not familiar with them, I was not, um, is that each form, um, shape and color is used to teach kids what parts of the speech is a sentence. So it was developed for kids to uh, have a first notion of grammar and how language structures work. Um, it's great for this specific purpose, but now I'm going to show you on the example I showed before. Um, when we come to foreign, uh, like non-native speakers, the categories that they need to know cannot be visualized through the system. Um, so here you can see like the, the, the first three words are is an article, adjective, and a noun. And the shape kind of shows how they're related. And the sizes also show, um, I think it's the meaning. Né? The stronger meaning is the noun, so it has a bigger shape. Um, so I was wondering, okay, this is a very interesting way to combine other things besides color to show information. Um, so that's definitely um, a useful uh, direction to take. And because she works with signs, with, with symbols, um, it gives us more room to show information. Because if you just show on the text, it can be also very hard to read in the end. So that's those are the things that I thought was super interesting. But for our case, German and non-native speakers, the system was not working very well. So I started to collect um, all the inspirations and ask myself, what other visual systems do we use on our daily basis to take as an inspiration? Um, a big one was control panels. And here I was not worried about if they're good or bad examples, um, but more like, examples of how the visuals tell us something on how to do a task, for example. Um, another inspiration was the famous uh, signs for uh, laundry and how they inform you how to wash your clothes and street signs, how they combine colors and shape also to um, inform us on different aspects. Um, once I got like this overview of the problem inspirations, I started to ask, okay, but now how can we really visually communicate the language? Um, and that was the, the fun part, the hands-on. Um, I started to explore really like all types of ways we can show the gender, the case, and 
uh, word, uh, word order, um, the connectors and all different grammar types. And while developing those first drafts, I was not worried about if they were helpful or not. First, I just really wanted to see what is it possible? What can we do? Um, and here are just some of sketches. I have a box here at home still with like all the sketches I did because every time I would see something, I was like, oh, maybe we could use the location or maybe we could use lines. And after a while, it kind of started naturally, um, the science kind of started uh, naturally selecting um, what made more sense and what not. And the ones that were making sense um, could be put into these um, goals, like this, this um, aspect or these criteria. Um, so in the end, I was choosing um, the combinations of visual techniques that first were able to guide the attention to relevant aspects for my target group, which were non-native speakers. Um, Second was the signs that, or the combinations that helped explain the grammar. So they were not informing on the meaning of that word, but the syntax. So the appearance was showing somehow how that word relates to others in the sentence. The third aspect was, is it simple enough that somebody can remember? Because in the end, um, you don't wanna have something create a visual thing that is more complex than the language. Now you want something that is simple and that they can help, uh, they can learn in the long term um, and stay there. The fourth criteria was that the entire system had to follow a consistent visual logic. And here um, I put on the fourth position, but actually that was the most important criteria that the system um, is consistent and that they build upon itself. So learners, the things they learn on the first day, they keep taking that knowledge throughout the, the levels they, they follow. Um, and here I'm gonna show you the decisions we made for this case, the, the specific case I was talking about, the grammar and the case. Um, and we stick, we decided to stick with color for gender because the grammatical gender of a word was one of the few things that does not change. So if a word is mac masculine, it will always be masculine. And by always showing the word with the color of the gender, um, it was more likely that people would remember the word with together with the color. So I remember the word baum with the color green. So I remember it's masculine. We also uh, kept using color for plural because um, in German, independent on the, germ the grammatical gender of a word, the plural will receive the same article. So here we didn't have to differentiate masculine from neutral, but rather show this is masculine neutral, this is, um, sorry, masculine plural, neutral plural, feminine plural. So we are showing what letters change through the color but they can still see what is the grammatical gender of that word. Once we covered gender, we went to the second category, which was case. Um, here you can see the, the sentence with the colors. And the good thing about using color for gender as well was that we can then highlight the endings of the words and show how the noun was affecting the other words in the sentence. Um, and for the cases, I chose to use forms um, because it was a very cool thing about the different cases in German is that they have different um, number of declension patterns, so to say. So the shapes, they were indicating how many different unique endings each case has. Um, so in nominative, we have four different endings. But in the dative case, we only have three because all masculine declension and neutral declension are completely the same. So actually, you just need to remember three and not four. And in genitive, there are only two because then feminine and plural are the same. Um, 
In this way, the shape of the case was not only telling uh, learners what case it is, but was also helping them remember the, the different um, patterns. Um, and here, um, because if gender and case was everything, then it would not be German because German needs to be complicated. So besides these two things, we also have the weak and the strong declensions. And here we decided to show then how when an article has the ending, then the adjective has the weak declension. And when the article has no ending, then the adjective has the full declension. Well, what about highlighting? Because we said in the beginning, we need to highlight. Um, we decided to just turn off everything that was context and focus on showing the color of the part that is on focus and everything else was turned off. Everything up to here was my master thesis. And then I delivered this book and we were like, okay, we need to keep going. So that's when I joined the research group and then we developed, we kept developing um, icons for other parts of the language until we covered all the structures. Um, and then we could have all the structures shown through a specific, specifically um, form. And here I cannot go through all of them because each form took such a long discussion that we need an hour for it to explain its shape. Once we had the system, we then partner with the international office from the university because the head of the international office had uh, 25 years of experiencing teaching German as a foreign language. So she helped us put the system together into a book. Um, and when we were structuring the book, we also tried to apply um, the knowledge from information visualization on um, the order of showing things. So each chapter starts with an overview of all the structures. And then we go into an introduction of a specific category. And then in the end, uh, the page will go into the detail of each specific structure. So it's like the Schneiderman mantra overview first, um, na, category, and then detail on demand. So once the book came together, it took us two years to finish the system, finish the book. We got uh, a grant from the Federal Foreign Office in Germany, and we were able to print 500 copies of the book. And then we delivered all of these books for free to all international students in the university. We still have a lot of copies. So all the new students that come and German is not their native language, they get a copy of the book for free. Um, we also then uh, were very honored to receive the Design Preis Brandenburg in 2021 in the Young Professionals category. And last year we got the, we won the German Design Award um, for the book. And once we got these awards, we kind of got out of the university né? because until then everything was happening in the university. So I got the feedback from the students from the first edition. And in order to bring to a larger public, um, I started my own publisher last year and we, uh, I partnered with a German teacher and we launched the second edition of the book and further pro uh, projects that use that system. If you guys are interested to know more about it here, I have our Instagram where we post um, yeah, little, no uh, little tips on German using the system and a website from the project. <laughs>